Welcome to iLecture Online, and here's another example of how we're going to calculate the work done by a thermodynamic process. Here it's uh, the temperature is constant, so it's an isothermic process. This is our example two. And uh, we are allowing to a gas to do some work, having it expand isothermally from a volume of 50 liters to a volume of 200 liters. Uh, it does that by changing the pressure from initial pressure of three atmospheres down to the atmospheric pressure of one atmosphere. All right, how do we do that? Well, not only do we have to find the work done, we also need to find the amount of heat exchanged to the gas and the change in internal energy. Now, however, you can already very quickly realize that since this is an isothermic process, delta U is zero, so the internal energy doesn't change because the temperature doesn't change. So here, right away, we can say that this is equal to zero, and we have figured out one out very quickly. Now, if we go to the first law of thermodynamics, it says that the change in internal energy is equal to Q minus W. Q is the heat added to the gas. W is the work done by the gas. And since delta U is zero, we can say zero is equal to Q minus W or Q equals W. So once we find W, we find Q as well. Now, the work done in an isothermic process can be found by using the following equation. Work done is equal to N RT times the natural log of V2 over V1, V2 being the final volume, V1 being the initial volume. Since we know the difference in the volumes, we know volume 1 and volume 2, all we need to do here is find the temperature. Now, the temperature wasn't given. Matter of fact, it's one of the things they're asking for. So how do you find the temperature of that gas? You know the pressures, you know the volumes. Ah, you can use the gas equation. You can use the equation that PV equals nRT. And since you know uh, pressure and volume at the beginning or end of the cycle, um, we know N, 5, 5 moles, and R is our gas constant. We can then say that T is equal to PV over nR. Plug in the right numbers. It doesn't matter which point we take. We can go ahead and take point number 2. So we have the pressure of one atmosphere. And of course, we have to convert that to um, uh, pascals, which is 101,300 pascals per atmosphere. The volume, 200 liters, we have to convert that to cubic meters. Since there's 1,000 liters in a cubic meter, that is 0 0.2 cubic meters. And finally, we divide it by N. We said there's 5 moles. And R, which is 8.31, that's a joules per mole times Kelvin. So the moles cancel out, atmospheres cancel out, and then actually we're going to end up with Kelvin degrees. This will survive, the cubic meters, the pascals, and the joules all will cancel out, and it'll just give us Kelvin. I need a calculator, it's right here. Let's figure it out. 101, 300 times 0.2 divided by 5 and divided by 8.31. And what do we get here? Hmm, 488. So the temperature, actually, I'll 487.6. We'll get it a little bit more accurate. Kelvin. All right. So that's the temperature of this particular process. Now, the next thing we need to do is plug that in here and everything else, and we should be able to come up with the work done. So again, this is uh, 5 R 8.31. Uh, that would be joules per mole times Kelvin, of course, this is moles. Go ahead and put that in so the moles cancel out. Temperature we found to be 487.6 Kelvin, and then the natural log of, and notice this is simply the ratio of the volumes. The final volume, 200 liters, the initial volume, 50 liters, so we just want the ratio, 200 liters divided by 50 liters, which is a ratio of four. Now if we go ahead and work that out, so we multiply it times uh, four, take the natural log of that, and then multiply times 8.31, and then multiply times 5, and, wow, there we go. The work done by this process is 28,086 joules. That's a few more significant figures than we typically want to keep, but we'll go ahead and just leave it like that. So that's the work done. And, of course, that's the work done. Where does the energy come from to do that work? Since the temperature of the gas doesn't change and the internal energy doesn't change, of course, that comes from the heat added to the gas, and that has to be equal quantity. So therefore, we can say that Q, since it's equal to W, it's equal to 28,086 joules as well. So that's the heat added to the gas, and that's the work done by the gas. All right, 
Is there anything else that we need? No, it looks like we have finished the problem. There it is, that's how we do it. Isothermic processes are fairly straightforward as long as we can figure out what the volumes are or the pressures or the temperature. All right, there you go.